Hi, I'm James. I'm known on the O-Dub site as Jay Houston, and I've been asked to put together a brief tutorial on repairing quarter cable sanders. First off, I'd like to start by pointing out what to look for when you go to buy a used sander. Quarter cable used various methods of constructing their sanders over the years, but the basic technology doesn't vary much. Other than the B5 here, the first of their belt sanders, almost every worm drive belt sander they use is disassembled in the same fashion. The A2, 503, the T33, the A3, and BB10 are all disassembled by removing the screws in this front casting, removing the brush caps and brushes, and then working this piece loose, which will bring the field out with this casting. Now, depending on the model, you may need to remove a screw under here, and you are going to want to disassemble your switch because your switch wire is going to be attached to your field, but all of their sanders come apart in this way. The B5 differs chiefly in not having a chain drive between the armature and the worm gear, so it comes off from the top uh, much like a router. Now here I have an A3 sander, it's partly disassembled, it's due for some repairs, that I'm going to use to show you a couple of things to watch for. This sander wound up needing repair because it was, as many of these belt sanders are, run without gear oil. The main thing you want to watch for, if you find one of these used, if you can plug it in and you run it and you hear a rapid knocking sound, chances are very good that the brass gear in the gearbox is damaged. This is the most common form of damage of these. Many of the sanders here I wound up with because a former owner had either neglected to put gear oil in the gearbox or they had replaced with grease, which does not work. It flung off the gears that winds up in the corners of the gearbox and doesn't lubricate anything. Now this A3 here has been partly disassembled. And with the screws out, if I pull on that front casting, which on the A3 is much longer than on the 504, I can turn the unit and pull the armature out. When buying any used power tool, one easy test you can make of its viability is to rotate the armature in the machine by hand. Uh, what you're listening for is one click per revolution of the armature, which would indicate that one of your commutator bars has either pulled loose from its backing or has been ripped out. Um, that's, uh, that's common tools that are burnt up. Um, that's a common, uh, common phrase for that situation. Uh, this armature in and of itself, the uh, windings are along the dark side. This, uh, this armature is actually in need of rewinding. Um, but if, uh, if that condition occurred, one of these commutator bars here would be either broken out and would have a shiny edge, or it would be completely missing. For the 504 A3 series, this armature is still available. For an older one, like the B5 here, this wound up getting uh, its armature rewound which is actually not that expensive to do. It cost me about $125 to have that done, um, that the armature in the field be done, and it does pose a way to repair a tool that otherwise would not be viable to fix. One thing to be made aware of is that often when these sanders are dropped, the front roller will be driven out of true with the rear plating. It's not actually the arm so much it gets bent, but the, uh, the plate emboss itself. And uh, that is correctable, but it's something to be, to be uh, made aware of. Uh, often what will happen is the, uh, the front roller will be knocked out of parallel with the rear plate. And when this happens, this causes an erratic tracking condition. Uh, the sand will be very touchy, or in extreme cases will fling the belt off uh, at the slightest provocation. Uh, this is uh, correctable, as I said, and uh, what's required is to set the sander on a flat surface. Uh, a surface plate uh, would be excellent if you have access to one. Determine how much it's bent. You'll want to remove your 
uh, shoe assembly and uh, setting it on a surface that you don't mind pounding on actually drive down on this portion here with a plastic mallet. It's nerve-wracking and it will take a great deal of patience but you can bring a uh, bring a sander like this back in the fine tracking condition with that method. The tracking arm here, um, it's a very simple system. It's not really prone to any problems. But uh, one annoyance is when the sander's dropped and this knurled knob is bent out of uh, plane. Um, this causes a certain amount of stiffness in the arm if it's, uh, if it's bent severely. And it just uh, makes it harder to find and adjust it. These definitely need to be heated up to, uh, to be bent back, but I've done that successfully a number of times, and that's really the only thing you have to be concerned with. There is also this lower boss right here. Often on the sander that's been dropped or banged around considerably, this lower boss will be snapped off. Without this boss, there's nothing to keep this arm from rocking because the boss is faces here are what actually keep the tracking arm uh, in the same plane with the platen. So that's another thing to be made aware of. And that is a far more serious condition than the roller being bent. Essentially, the only other thing you'll have to watch for is if you can take the oil plug here out of the sander, you may find a uh, bronze colored paste that's uh, indicative of severe gear wear. Sander is more than likely going to need a gear replaced. Now on the 504 the part's still available. The, uh, the gear for this sander costs about $35. But it's an added expense and on some sanders like the T33 the gear is no longer available. It's been discontinued since the 50s on this sander. And the damaged gear there is going to lead to a certain amount of improvising to get the machine working again. Other than that, there really isn't a whole lot you can do to kill one of these. It's a very robust tool. It's designed for production work, and it'll take a heck of a beating. Uh, broken switches, bad brushes, things like that, you're going to replace them anyway, so it's nothing to be concerned with. But those are the main things that you want to consider when you're thinking about buying one of these. The sander that we're going to work on in this series is this sander here. Here we have a 503 sander that's in excellent shape. Uh, it's an early sander. Um, you can tell that by the Speedmatic tag. And the sander also has the larger dust port. Uh, unlike the later ones that went to a smaller port so they could share the bag with the belt driven sanders. Now this sander has been pretty well taken care of, which is can be judged by the lack of abrasions, things, dents, cracks. None of these castings here are cracked. That's a, that's a common wear and tear item. There's no scratching on this plate, so that's another indication that was cared for. It has the original period correct knob. That's what they used on sanders of this vintage. This sander would have been built more than likely sometime between 50 and 54, give or take. The, uh, the paint and the cartouche on the side is still in good shape. The brush caps are not cracked or damaged. The holes aren't clogged. But the main thing that concerns me for this rebuild is this. We cycle S on 504, or the 503, the glass on the 503 has a bronze color on the inside of the glass, and that's an indication the oil is contaminated with bronze chips. This may have been from a gear that was damaged and replaced, and the gearbox was not flushed correctly. I've seen that happen. But more than likely, this bronze was part of the gear at one point, and it's been eroded away, probably by improper, uh, improper oil or waiting too long in between intervals of popping off the oil. The, uh, this sander is more than likely it belonged to one person. It's, uh, it's just a little too plain, a little too nice for uh, it to belong to a maintenance department or a school. Schools are a very common source of this sander. Um, they like it for the dust collection, which sanders of its period is the only one that uh, Porta Cable had that had dust collection 
there was a worm drive sander. This sander replaced the, uh, the BB-10 in about 1949 or 50. Um, as I said, it's a very early model. And what I'm seeing is a sander that's in decent shape. It shouldn't take much to get it corrected. But what we're going to do is go over the disassembly and the uh, methods I use to repair these sanders for my own use. Now, uh, these sanders, of course, you can clean them up and put them on a shelf. If you, have a, uh, if you have a model that's very deteriorated, sometimes it's the best thing for them. I have one that's such an exotic, rare, oddball sander, it would, it would be foolish to actually use it for anything. But every one of these other sanders is a working sander, with the exception of the B5, which isn't finished yet. And what I plan on doing is getting this sander so it is in the condition they can be used like any of these day in, day out, with very low maintenance. So that's the uh, that's going to be our goal as far as this goes.